So today's first look is going to be all about the bike that I have been asked about the most, and it is an electric bike. Um, I'm not going to call this thing like revolutionary because I don't think that's the correct term. It's not really revolutionary. It does have a new drive unit on it, but I think it is actually the most well thought out e mountain bike on the market currently. We've been waiting for this thing for over a year. This is the Orbea Rise. The reason we were waiting on this thing for over a year, if you take away the uh, whole uh, pandemic scenario that I know uh, stopped a lot of things. That's why bikes are hard to get right now. But the, the motor that comes on this thing, it is the EP8. Orbea partnered specifically with Shimano to produce this for them. They're the only ones using this motor, this drive unit. Uh, basically, and this is one reason I love Shimano, they said it was not ready last year when we were supposed to get these bikes. I think the casing was actually cracking after X amount of miles. Take everything I say like that with a grain of salt. But that's what I heard through the grapevine. And instead of just putting them out there and saying have at it, they said no. Uh, it's not ready yet. That's that's why it took them a whole extra year to get here. We just got these in, just built up two of them. I got the other color behind me here. I'll show it to you as well, but it is already sold. This is the first e-bike I have been super excited for. Uh, we'll get to that. Let me go over the specs because I'm, I'm getting too excited here, talking, talking too much. I know. Let me go over the specs. I'll go over my first impression. So this is the Orbea Rise M20. M20 means that it is an OMR frame. That is a carbon fibre frame. Super, super beautiful. For all intents and purposes, the easiest way to describe this bike is this is an Occam. This is an Occam with a battery, with a motor, a drive unit. If this was a Giant, they would just call it an Occam E, which Giant, I love you to death, but your, your naming for the e-bikes is, it's, is whatever. Um, this is the Rise M20. It, you can get it with a 150 front fork on it or 140. Rear travels 140 as well. So the shock on the rear is a Fox Float DPS Performance Evol. And the front fork is a Fox 34 Float Performance. It's a 140. The suspension is, is decent. You know, it's not Kashima coated or anything like that, but they're super nice, super nice. Works very, very nice. And the handlebar stem combination, that kind of stuff is just your OEM stuff from Orbea, decent OEM stuff. The drivetrain is gonna be SLX, which is super nice. The crank though is not Shimano. The crank is an E13. That's something that irked me a little bit about this bike, but it's just a little minor thing because it has a Shimano EP8 drive unit right here, but then right in front of it is an E13 crank. I just think it would, it would look a little better if it had a Shimano crank. So you got an SLX derailleur, chain, cassette. The brakes are Shimano M6100, that is Dior level brakes. The wheel set is Race Face AR30C tubeless wheels. Decent wheel set, especially on this puppy here. Seat post is the OEM dropper from Orbea. I've never had a problem out of their droppers. Uh, super decent, they're essentially the exact same thing that Giant uses, it just says OC on it. So yeah, so that is the rundown on the specs. I am going to weigh it. I'm super excited for that. I love the paint job. Orbea, so far for a mountain bike especially, you guys have done the best for the paint. It does have gloss in the front, transitions to flat in the rear. It's got some nice little features. I do love the paint job. I would have this on a new Oys if I could. If you take the price point away, because you guys know I have been having a super hard time saying whether a bike is worth the price or not, because you know, with the pandemic happening and the price of stuff increasing, it's hard for me to say if a bike is worth 
the cost or not. Because to me, if you can get a bike right now, it's worth the cost because it's so hard to get freaking anything. But I love the spec of this bike. They do everything right. There's nothing that I think needs to be upgraded. Their wants, you know, like I'm a sucker for the gold on the Kashima coated stuff. I think it would look beautiful with this bike with how the Orbea is in orange as well. Um, I think that would look good, but I don't, I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference. I love that they did 180 rotors and four piston brakes, front and rear. The one thing that I think is weird, especially for the price of the bike, the brakes, front and rear brakes are different. Uh, they're both in 6100. You are not getting two different brakes, but they are uh, paint job on them, whatever's different. The front one actually says Dior on it. It is gloss. The rear one is flat, does not say Dior on it. It says M6100, it says Shimano. That's freaking weird. And I postulate that based off of what I have seen on availability, this was the only way they were able to get these bikes out in somewhat of a timely manner. They put two different versions of a brake on there. I also postulate, and this is just my thinking, Orbea could just argue that they did it to go along with the paint scheme. Because the front of the bike is gloss, the back of the bike is flat, so if you're going based off of just the calipers, the front caliper is gloss, the back one is flat. That is just a theory. That is just a guess, not even a theory. But I did, when I first saw it, I'm like, really? This bike is seven grand, $69.99, and you're gonna put two different brake, they're not two different brakes, it's just, one's an M6100 and one you could say is the Dior. Uh, yeah, that's my biggest gripe with what this bike comes with. Other than that though, it's pretty standard. It's full SLX. I love that they even put an SLX chain and cassette on it. Not many companies do the chain and cassette. They usually will put something really cheap on there for a cassette and a chain and that's how you can cut cost without it being super impactful. I will read the specs off in a second for this drive unit, but what was this bike actually marketed for? Why am I so excited for it? It is more or less because this bike, its max torque output is 60 Newton meters. If you compare that to something like the giant Trance that I got to ride, the e-bike, it's 80. So it's 20 Newton meter torque difference. This is supposed to be, how do they word it? I think Orbea words it more bike, less E. Most of your modern e-bikes with this amount of travel or more are gonna be 50 plus pounds. This one though, let's, let, let, let's throw it on the stand, I wanna weigh it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll jump to it. So this thing weighs 42 pounds for all intents and purposes out of the box. That's light for a 140 travel e-bike. And the way they can do that, of course it's carbon frame. This is the only thing, like I said, that is an e-bike. The rest of it is a standard bike. On that trance, it had an e-bike specific shifter. The wheels were beefier because it was an e-bike. That kind of stuff makes a bike heavier. And basically they took the requirements of that away by taking your torque away with this bike. Now a lot of people argue that they want to have that power mode, that number five. Ugh. But to me, if you want an e-bike to ride at Whitewater Center or Pisgah or something, you shouldn't want something that has that much torque. This would be perfect because I think it only makes you as fast as like your local Cat 1 really, really quick dude. Because its top speed is 20, but with their control unit, it's progressive. So the harder you pedal, the faster it goes. They optimize it and you can customize all this, which is even cooler with an app. I haven't got to play with the app. It's a Shimano app. We all know how those have worked in the past. Hopefully this one is better, but you can customize it. But they, uh, the initial design is for you to be pedaling between 75, I think, and 95 RPMs, which is how I think it should be. You want an e-bike to feel like a bike, right? So this bike, when you couple it with being lightweight, the way the motor engages, and it does have a power band, you can look at the power curves. Um, they try to make it feel just like if you were a really strong cyclist. That is the goal of this bike. So am I making sense there? I hope I am. And that is why I'm excited about this because there's three classifications of e-bikes, class one, two, three. There's a lot of places where e-bikes are getting banned now. I don't wanna have that discussion whether I think e-bikes should be banned or not, but I do think if they had a fourth classification, 
or they just redid one of them and they said max torque or this motor only or however they wanted to do it, I think this bike should be allowed just about everywhere because it really does just make it feel like you're having a really freaking awesome day on a bike. To me, it's light enough if you were to crash on this thing Knock on wood, you don't, but if you did crash on this thing, it's not the end of the world. It's not a 55, 60 pound e-bike laying on top of you. That's why I love this thing. It is literally what I think an e-bike should be. Obviously, I'm excited for it. I hope it does really, really well. I wanna ride it before I continue to talk your ear off, but my first impression of this thing is the Rise is the best e-bike on the market. That's just me. I know there's competitors out there, but you know I'm an Orbea fan. It's the only one using this Shimano motor. You know, max speed's 20, max torque is 60. This is super impressive too. So the Rise is intended for very long rides as well. That's a part of it being a lightweight bike. Um, it says eight hours and over 4,000 meters of climbing in eco mode. So eco mode is gonna be where it's helping you the least, but it is built to last a lot longer. Eight hours is a long freaking time. But you can also combine a, they call it a range extender. It essentially goes right here where your, your bottle cage would be, and that will add another 252 watt hours, uh, which, is, which is pretty impressive. So there you guys have it. This is the Orbea Rise. It checks off all the boxes that I really wanted it to. But for all intents and purposes, so far, just out of the box, this has been the best e-bike I have seen. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope it does well. And I hope I get to ride it for real on a trail to give you guys an honest review of it. But just out of the box, beautiful bike. Thank you all for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.